This is a time of flight distance sensor. It has a wide field of view and is typically used to sense the distance to objects in that field of view. But what if we want to do more than just sense distance and reconstruct 3D geometry from posed measurements from this sensor? One thing you might try is to project the distance estimates outwards from the sensor, forming a point cloud. But because the distance estimate is a summary over the entire field of view, the projected point may not fall on the scene geometry. However, sensors like this one actually capture more information than a single distance estimate. They operate by illuminating the scene with the pulse of light, and measuring the intensity of that pulse over time as it returns back from the scene. This measured pulse is called the transient histogram. Ideally, we could utilize the entirety of the information in these transient histograms to reconstruct the scene. Solving this problem is the topic of our paper, Towards 3D Vision with Low-Cost Single-Photon Cameras, which has been published at CVPR 2024. Our method is based on a differentiable render and compare pipeline, the same idea behind methods like NERF and Gaussian splatting. Our approach is similar to these in spirit, but takes as input a set of transient histograms rather than RGB images, and aims for accurate 3D reconstruction rather than novel view synthesis. The scene is represented by a neural network, which takes as input a 3D point in space and as output reports the sine distance to the nearest surface. To recover the geometry of the scene, we initialize the neural SDF network to a sphere. We render histogram measurements of the scene and compare them to the observed histograms via a loss function. Because the entire rendering process is differentiable, we can take the derivative of this loss function with respect to the scene geometry. We then use gradient descent to optimize the weights of the neural SDF which implicitly encode the scene geometry. After optimizing the scene for many iterations, the rendered histograms match the observed histograms and the implicit SDF encodes something that resembles reality. To test our method on real-world data, we use a robot arm to gather many posed measurements from the sensor looking at a static object. First, let's look at how the baseline methods fare on this task. The first baseline is reprojection. We find the peak of the histogram, convert it to a distance, and project outwards from the sensor. If we do this for all measurements, the result resembles a cylinder, but the reconstruction is sparse and the details are not clear. The second baseline is space carving. The idea here is that it's safe to carve out distances at which the intensity of returning light is below some threshold. By doing this for every sensor, we can expose the underlying scene like a sculptor chipping away at marble. In practice, it is impossible to find a fixed threshold that works well for all scenes. In the case of our toy container, some volume of the container is carved away, and the resulting scene does not resemble the true shape. Finally, let's look at the results of our method. We get a dense reconstruction that closely resembles the true shape. We use chamfer distance, a metric for computing the similarity between two shapes, and find that our method more closely resembles the ground truth than baselines do. Further, we find that these results are consistent across many objects, including simple geometries and more complex geometries. There are some cases where a method does not perform well. Because we assume a Lambertian surface, highly reflective objects cause inaccurate results. Future work may be able to alleviate this problem by learning spatially varying scene reflectance. Our method relies on known sensor poses and could be used in situations where relative sensor poses remain fixed over time, like arrays of sensors for wearable computing. It could also be used in situations where the relative motion of sensors is known, such as distributed sensing on robot manipulators. Click the videos to check out our related work and see the description for a link to the project page and paper, which is freely available.